I'm sitting here thinking about how sad I'm going to be when I get home and I am no longer looking in your faces, guys. Like this has been <laughs> an amazing, amazing week of not only getting to think through passive income strategies, tax strategies, but also just having the brain power, the success in the room. I, I said this, and I and I mean it 100. percent Is that every one of us that were in that room are the top dog in our in our area, in your personal circle? You mean? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But when you look around and you realize that the people in that room can lift you up to heights that you didn't even think possible, that's what gets exciting. Joey, I want to go around. I'm sitting here with you, Sharon, and Mark Podolsky. And I think that there's a lot of nuggets that came out of this event that I want everyone to be able to get out of this. And I know we're sharing this on all our podcasts. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Russ Morgan. They call me the idea guy um, with Wealth Wealth Wall Street. And I'm sitting here next to my business partner, Joey Murray. We got Sharon Shravatsa, the business school, the brains behind all the influencers, and Mark Podolsky, the land geek. But I want to get to what were the eight ideas that can make a million dollars a piece for you and let those people who are here take those and and gain insight. So, right. Sally, what's your first? <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lead off with this. So, um, Mike Eddins of WealthAbility came and shared with our group, and he kind of demystified one of the top things I believe that is standing in the way of most people that are looking to invest and they don't feel like they can get access to their qualified plans. When I say, you know what I'm talking about, 401ks, IRAs have been a magnet for your cash. Since the day you stepped into your office for the first day and someone hands you a packet, they start siphoning off your money into something that you can't own or control until you're 59 and a half. When you start learning about wealth without Wall Street, you start learning about flipping land, you start learning about how to grow a business. And you realize you have all these funds locked up. This is standing in the way to financial freedom. And what Mike did is he uncovered a simple, a couple very simple strategies. Legal. To, legal strategies. Legal. That are in the tax code to free your money from those places and not have to have that head trash of the penalties and the taxes that are due because he's now using that money to invest in something that will wipe out your whole tax liability for that year. That, I know people were raving about that in my circles when I was talking to them after this. How about for you, Sharon? What's your, what's your big idea? What's, what's the first thing that comes to mind after being here and, and hearing the brain power to share content after content? I think the big thing that I understood was, or I saw in action, was the fact that uh, every almost every single person that came into this room thought that the only way to invest was I need to buy a single family house. That was every single person was like, oh, we've always been taught uh, the wealth is in real estate. But people forget that real estate is just an asset class. There's so many ways to make money inside of real estate, but the only easy accessible thing is based on where we live. So we're like, well, um, if you own your house, you should buy your neighbor's house. Like that is the dumbest idea ever. That makes no <laughs> sense for most people. They can't even afford their own house. And now they're like, well, I'm going to buy another single family house. And then they don't realize that there's so much more to it. Then, then, and then they get disillusioned because they're like, I bought one, then I bought another, then I bought another. And then I had to fix the water heater in one and I lost the entire three months worth of rent. And what I saw was, was really uplifting for me because uh, by the way, I was that guy. I bought my first single family house, which was my first investment, uh, by borrowing from credit cards. Uh, people told me I should invest in real estate. I borrowed from a credit card, cash out, cash out from the credit card, paid my down payment, $18,000, bought a house in Mount, in Mount Shasta, had never met, never seen it. I got it. And then three years after I rolled balances, balances in that credit card, I made like $11,000 total, right? And interestingly, now, yeah, cool, I had $11,000 today, but it didn't move the needle for me. And I think that's what happened to a lot of people is that since they only know one strategy, 
they think that there is only one strategy. And that was the big thing. Every single person that I talked to in the room were like, hmm, I didn't realize that there were so many strategies available to us. And here's the deeper part. I didn't realize it because I didn't spend the time researching it. And I didn't spend some, they didn't, have not met somebody who has done it, who I could actually sit down and say, hey, what was that first three years like? Was it hard? Was it easy? Did you have to come up with a lot of money? Did you not have to? And talking to somebody who has done something else gives you confidence, gives you clarity, gives you hope that you can do it yourself too. So the big thing that I saw was a lot of people not just flocking by the way of, hey, the only way I can invest in something is a multi is a single family house. There's so many other strategies. And connecting with somebody else, maybe someone that is 24 years old from New York, Michaela, who just has done a great job, or someone that is investing a lot more money in multifamily, like Robert, saying, I can do different things. And knowing that you can do different things is a lot of power to that. I, I love that. I just want to riff on that for a second. Because there's so much power in the fact that you know, all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, mm -hmm. and you go into this room and you start being exposed to so many different strategies. And it reminds me of if you want to be like, like there's like that, that book, The Talent Code. Right, and there's like different hot spots in the world where the best soccer players in the world kind of come from, like these small towns, the best baseball players. Let's pick on Cuba, right? What do they have all in common? Well, someone from that town went to the major leagues, so they look at that person like, "Oh, that could be me." And you're in that room with a guy like Sharon or you know Russ and Joey, who have you know ten thousand different passive income investments that are breaking down their passive income strategies. And then you look like a guy like Chris Larson with car washes or Bryce Robertson in mobile home parks. And, you know, Sharon and Robert are breaking down multifamily and the depreciation and the cost segregation. And look, I'm going to get really emotional about depreciation because I don't have any land. <laughs> but then Michael Eden's talking about, you know, solar and, and all these tax changes. All of a sudden your mind starts to expand. And it, once it expands, you can't go back to your old reality. You're different. That is powerful. Well, on that very point, I mean, today when we were wrapping up, we were going around getting the, the highlights from the people in the room. One of the people said, the biggest thing I had as a takeaway was exactly what you mentioned there, Mark, was when everybody's goal attitude is actually in this room, their normal attitude, right? He's like, I came in here with this goal attitude of wanting to get to a point where my passive income equaled my monthly expenses. I come in here, their normal attitude is that's what it is. Yeah. Their goal is to get 200% of that. I think being in a room with people who see things at a much different level, we were sitting here in a breakout and one of the conversations came up of, hey, I want to build my own fund. And the person across the way said, I can help you with that. Actually, I'll show you how to do that. I already have a fund. Once you get your fund going, then you can invest portion of that into mine. Like the abundance mentality to say, hey, you're not competition to me. We're in completely different asset classes. You're doing land. I'm doing multifamily. But we know that the reason we're doing this has nothing to do with me making money. We all have the money that we need. But what do we want? We want more time. We want to create generational wealth. I think that that's important. And I saw that that was a common thread. Joey, what are some other ideas, tactics? So, so before Joey goes, I have, have one I have one thing. I think this will be helpful. I, there's a business lesson in here. And I tell my team this all often. And Mark shared this. He, he talked about the hammer. When you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I want to give you a different phrase. Sometimes you need three hammers. Sometimes you need three hammers. And here, here's what I mean. Um, this happened when my team... I was, I was talking to them and they're like, I said to them, I said, why do we have three pieces of software for a form? They're like, what do you mean? I said, well, we use Google Forms, we use Type Form, and we use Jot Forms. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, why do we need three form softwares? Like, pick one and let's do that. That makes sense. And I said, Google Forms is free. Let's just do that. They're like, no, Sharon, you don't understand. Google Forms, when we utilize it, it automatically fills out Google Sheets. So natively, that works really well. Jot forms, when we do that, there's good payment integration and I can do multi pages, multi step. And type form actually helps people focus. So when I want to ask like in depth questions, when I keep it only one question per page, type form does that. 
And they're like, we need all three pieces of software. But the average entrepreneur will say, well, that's crazy. Just use one. That's when I realized that sometimes you need three hammers, right? It's only one is free and two are 29 bucks a month, but it, it allows the team to do a significantly better job. So the one hammer often was the single family house, right? And when you realize that sometimes you need three hammers or more hammers, it makes you think that, wow, I just, I can't just walk around with one hammer. Right. So just just the idea that whenever you think that something is being redundant, just think about the phrase like sometimes you need three hammers. That's so good. I, if I was a tattoo guy, I'd put that on my, <laughs> my bicep. I'm not. <laughs> I, do, I, I do like a henna <laughs> tattoo. I, I'd love to see that. Uh, so I'm going to take this a little bit more intimate. When we're in these small groups, right, this is the highlight. This is what we hear from everybody that attends a retreat. There's, there's world-class speakers at the event, but what is it that they keep coming back for? It's the small group networking that is built into the fabric of our retreats. They're like, that is what separates this retreat from other events or conferences that I've ever attended. And I, we had a really good opportunity in one of ours where a guy that's been super successful in his career to build passive income. He opened up and he said, man, I really want to leave my job. I really don't want to stay in this role, but I feel compelled or obligated to stay for the next five years because there's a significant amount of retirement or, you know, some sort of a uh, pension that he could have, he can have if he just sticks it out five more years. And it was so interesting because we went around the circle, run around the table and got everybody's feedback on that. And some were like, man, it's just a few more years. You can do it. Like just stick with it. And, and I don't know, but what stood out to me is I got to speak into this guy's life and share with him what I could see from my perspective, because I've been there and I've done that. Right. I have, lived beyond the time that you have this like jumping off moment where you're like, am I nuts? Am I crazy? I'm leaving behind a significant income and this known future to jump into this unknown. And I look back now and I say, I, I mean, the opportunity that has opened up as a result is insurmountable. Like it is beyond my, my wildest dreams. And I looked at him and I pointed out the things that he's been so successful in that the audience of people that already looked to him for investing advice. And he, it was kind of like he started to see what I could see. And I think the amazing part of what we're able to do with this mastermind and what our people are a part of is that they get to borrow experience and perspective that is third party objective. I gain nothing by helping this guy other than the joy it brings to my life and to see him like succeed at the highest of levels. Um, and that's, that's the power. I mean, well, Sharon loves to say that every money plan, every money goal needs a money plan and you need to have a money coach. That's right. I think that that was what he found in that conversation with you is that he found someone in a, a peer group in that masterminding session to be able to have money coaches. I'm asking you as you're, you're riding down the road, you're running on the treadmill right now. Do you have a money goal? Okay. You got one, but do you have a money plan? Do you have one coach, two coach, three coaches that you can run these ideas by, as you said, Sharon, so eloquently when we're there that someone else can speak in your life and be so direct to say, you know what? You're better than this. You have higher ambitions and, and higher things to accomplish than just waiting it out in this situation five years to get a certain amount of money. Because what take the money away. What are you giving up, right? What's it costing you? Exactly. Now, I was thinking about what Joey was saying. I think there is a, when it comes to serious things like our finances and our money and our livelihood and how we need to take care of our families. We put a barrier sometimes 
And we're like, oh, I just want to talk about my work. I want to talk about my passion. But I won't, don't talk about the net net end result of that relating to money. And, and it takes me to the thought of, and because of that, we fail to see past the granularity. Here's what I mean. I think greatness is in the granularity. When you ask Mark, hey, like my son who's 10 years old, asked Mark, well, what county should I start doing land flipping in? And Mark was like, well, I could tell you like 14 different things, but if I were you and I was starting right now, here are two that I would choose from, right? There's a reason for that. And then he said, there, because if you pick your counties wrong, everything will break from there. Now, if you asked an online influencer, which many of us know, and many whom I advise, and many whom were not going to listen to this podcast because they're too cool for school, which is, <laughs> which is fun to say, but, but they will actually, they are Google influencers, meaning they will go research the benefits of an LLC on Google, and then they will make a video about the benefits of an LLC, and they're like, oop, look at me, I'm amazing, and they've never actually created an LLC in their lives. And this is the truth, right? There's a lot of Google influence, and you can tell that because everything is reduced to a 60-second clip these days. But my, my big learning on the mastermind was when you're sitting in a round table or sitting in a room and someone asks a question, one of two things happened. Thing number one that happened was, oh, here is what you do. And the person that was answering the question was able to break down like the entire plan beginning to end. Here's how you pick a county. Here's what you do there. Here's how you start. Here's what you do next. Here's the three ways you're going to get stuck. Don't do any of those now. Let me do this next. There's so much granularity that allows for confidence. The person knows what to do. So number one, they either got an answer with granularity or they got a, hey, I don't know that, but I know that Joey knows that. Come over here. Let me introduce you to Joey right now, and I'll tell you the questions you should ask Joey. What people do that bothers me so much is, hey, let me just connect you guys, and you guys will figure it out. No. It's like, hey, Mark, meet Joey. Joey was asking about these three things, and it made me think of you. Could you walk Joey through these three things? That's an insane introduction, and I think that happens in a tight mastermind setting, in a tight group where all the values are aligned, I don't think it happens in normal life. And that's why I think these groups get really special because when a person comes in with a question, they either get the full answer or they get someone who has a deep introduction with that answer. And that made me like super excited because it allowed me to know that I can ask anything and I either I'm going to get an answer or I'm going to get a really warm connection who can get me the answer. I want to, I want to add to this real quick. One of the most powerful things that we did in this mastermind, and we, we do it every time, is we make it a point to go to everybody, guests or members, say, what is one thing that you want to get out of this time? That you're going to look back and say, that was 10x the investment to be here. Is it a connection? Is it a strategy? Is it some sort of subject matter that you want to get further down the road with? And it was amazing to me. Like The takeaway for me was, if someone hasn't asked you this when you attend a conference or a mastermind, you need to make it a point to go to someone in that group and make known what is in your head. Because it was, it was shocking. Literally the first night, we're sitting at the members-only dinner, and I'm sitting across from a young lady, and she says, I really want to grow, like I want to build a fund. And literally sitting right next to me across the table from her is a legal attorney who does nothing but build funds for syndications. And I was like, have you guys met? It was literally immediate. And she the would have not known that necessarily if you would have asked her to verbalize it. And then secondly, yeah, I mean, it doesn't you know. say on his name tag. Yeah, fund exactly. Expert. <laughs> exactly. But my point is make it, make your desires known. And it's amazing. Things will, the connections will happen. So, What's a, a big takeaway for you? Yeah, I mean, everything you're saying has really resonated with me, especially that story, because to Sharon's point, it's it's such a rare privilege to be able to share something very deep and very intimate with a group of like-minded people and then have somebody who's like, oh yeah, I've been in your shoes. I know exactly how you feel and here's my perspective. And then you get a really deep perspective from someone who's done it. It's not just, you know, flipping, flipping or, or philosophical. Yeah. I, I can imagine this would be something you might be feeling 
And I can imagine, no, I've been there. I know exactly the stress you're feeling. And so on the billion dollar panel, we had four amazing people. We had a incredible estate planning attorney who doesn't just do estates, but really makes you think deeply about your legacy, a hundred year plan, generational wealth. We had uh, a Turo expert and a huge influencer who, you know, when you look at the guy, you don't know what you're going to, you're going to think about him. And then you start speaking like, oh my gosh, this guy's deep, deep brilliant. wisdom yeah. and brilliant and incredible business acumen. I mean, I don't want to give Sharon any more kudos, <laughs> yeah. but there's a reason we call it the billion dollar panel. Yeah. And so, you know, Sharon's on there just dropping knowledge bombs. And then you've got Bryce, uh, you know, the, the, the Australian who's, who's doing, so many different types of deals and you're getting perspectives. And, and, and what was interesting is, is Russ was like, oh, we don't hear about your successes. What were your biggest failures? And that alone was for me so impactful. And because we all are going to fail. If, it's like skiing. If you're not failing at some point, you're just not playing hard enough. You're not skiing hard enough. And uh, that was a huge takeaway for me along with how to build a hundred year legacy and really talk to your family. You know, here's 44 values. Let's get down to the five most critical ones and let it set up a plan for you in your, in your passive income and your wealth. What I loved about that panel, when we were talking about the failures and Matty J, the, the car rental game.com, highly encourage you to go check him out as an amazing influencer, but an amazing person. He, he shared something with me. He said, I, I don't believe in failures. Because I didn't quit. The time that my Corvette was stolen, the day before the Super Bowl, the day before I was going to have the highest return I could possibly get, actually led to me getting 33 cars. And he said, I could have easily given up, but I didn't. And I documented the process. And that's what's helped me grow it to over 50 something cars now. And now he's influencing and helping coach other people on how to do this, which is what gives him way more impact. I think about when we are sitting here at a passive income mastermind and so many people, as we said already, have solved for their money problems, but they're trying to solve for time. But we threw a, threw a little twist at them the first day, especially for our members, is we brought in one of the most highly uh, regarded health and sports and um, nutrition coaches in the world. Guy coaches CEOs, 40 or 50 different athletic programs, Olympians. And he came in and, and shared with us how we can improve our health. And here was something I took away from this. I, you know, we, we've heard lots of little health nuggets. But I wrote this one down. I, I thought it was so impactful. As he said, we are living in a world of fake health, right? Like you look at the four of us, none of us are, are overweight. I have great glowing skin, decent hair, right? And you, you would say the four of us are in great health. And I, I'm not saying that we're not, but he said we live in the world of fake health. But he says absent of disease, right? But full of symptoms. I think so many of us can relate to that, that, man, I wake up and I have this soreness. I have this pain. I have, I'm dealing with this allergy or whatever it may be. And it, a lot of that is just underlining symptoms of a bigger problem that we are just masking and we're not actually addressing. And I, I felt like that was important for us because as we were, were thinking about how are we going to bring energy to our lives, to our work, to our passive income, well, we have to be full of energy. And if you're not measuring it, you're not um, actively and proactively taking actions to get there, how are we going to be healthy when we get to the point where, hey, I want to hang up all this stuff, right? He went through those three phases. And I think the, the person at the end, he said, you know, the person that is unhealthy has one goal, right? But the person who is healthy has thousands of goals. I think that was interesting to me just to reiterate, why are we doing this? And what are other things we can focus on? Because if I have energy, then I can chase down one more idea, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need you to be healthy, my friend. Absolutely. There was um, 
there's something that Justin said that was super fascinating. He was describing one of his clients who uh, had recently had had kind of gotten can gotten cancer and had gotten through a couple of protocols and solved it. And he said something which kind of resonated with me. He had traded his health for something else in his life. He traded his health for significance. He traded his health for his work. He's traded his health for his ambition. And he used these words. He said, I earned my cancer. I yeah. earned my cancer. And like that hit me really hard because, uh, you know, Joe, you and I have had some wonky stuff going on with the health. And I think I traded, I traded my health for a bunch of ambition in my early years. And I, I earned, I earned what I have right now. But when you say you earned it, I also think you have the ability to solve it because mm -hmm. I can earn it back. I can earn the health back. And I think while it felt like a, ah, that's, that was harsh. It also felt, um, empowering because I was like, if I earned the pain, I could probably earn the, the good graces back. And so just, just having that language is important for me saying, you know, a lot of times it's easy for us to say, oh, I, I have this and I have that, but taking responsibility by saying, I, I earned the cancer, just like I earned the million dollars, I think is, is pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Even, even just to add on that, because Justin, this is a million dollar idea and he broke it down so, so simply for us and so easily, but it was so impactful. He's like, you want to improve your, your health? Here's a layup, get better sleep. And then he goes on the whiteboard. He writes three, two, one, three hours before bed, stop eating. Two hours before bed, stop working. One hour before bed, no light or no blue light. Oh, you want to watch TV with your significant other? No problem. Here's what you can do. And just, it was, it was such a practical, super practical, yeah. super practical thing that we could all take away from everyone. In the, you know, I would say everyone in the room, but a lot of people in the room are like, oh yeah, I have a hard time getting to sleep. I have a hard time staying asleep. Um, you know, I mean, just that alone is going to increase your energy level by 10%. What can you go out and do in the world with more energy? How much more impactful can you be for your business, for your family and just grow? Well, and I, I think we've talked about health a good bit because in order to show up to create 200%, you got to have your health. It's not, it's not an option not to. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think it was awesome to invest in our members okay. by having such a high caliber coach in the room. And then not to mention, you know, Jesse Ecker of the T Harv Ecker group to come in and to challenge um, our mindset and to, to equip us with ways to raise capital. And I mean, I know that there were lids raised as a result of that talk. People walked away and they were like, I can be done like that. The first day I can be done because this was worth every single penny. And this is going to 10 X everything that I do from here. Well, I think a big thing that happened, and I saw this and heard this is that we live in a world of what I, what we declared is spatial disorientation where we don't know what's up or down, right? That phenomenon that scuba divers or pilots have. And that, that confusion is paralyzing. And if we don't have clarity of what our health is, it's hard for us to give all to, what, to people around us. If we don't know, Joey, what our goal is from the passive income, we will not end up getting the income that we want from it and ultimately the result from that, right? But I think it was really impactful that I had a chance to have a sidebar conversation with one of our members as he was walking away today. And he said, I had clarity out of this event. I mean, he had a tear coming to his eye. I was like, tell me about it. Man. He said, you know, I, I've really been working so hard in my business. I've been trying to find all these different passive income strategies that I wanted to go and become an operator in. Like, I want to be the Mark Podolsky. I want to be the Sharon Shabazz. Like, I want to come up with ways to build all of these strategies and, and, and like, be the, the CEO of those ideas in addition to all I'm doing. He's like, but I had clarity. I had a breakthrough. And I said, you know, I'm sitting in a room full of people who've done all of those things. I don't have to be the one to do it. Why don't I just take the income that I've created, build a system where I can turn my active income into passive income, 
just plug in and and not run myself down spend more time with my wife and my two kids and i thought that was super cool right like that he through this event like when you sometimes get around other people who are doing things at a high level you sometimes you want to then try to emulate what they're doing but he was able to see hey i don't have to reinvent the wheel i just jump onto the bus that's already there and get myself to the destination i want to go I think um, a couple of you, you, both you and Joe, you mentioned this, these percentages. I want to clear this up for, for, for folks. If you've not, if you hear a random percentage is like 200% or like Mr. Podolsky, 2000%, right? <laughs> Here, here's what the number means. Uh, there is a broader definition because once you define something, it's easier to get there. Uh, there's a broader definition for financial freedom, which is when your passive income uh, is greater than your monthly expenses, you are financially free. Now, that would be if your passive income is equal to your monthly expenses, that is 100%, correct? Right. And when your passive income is 200% of your monthly expenses, that is the goal for the passive income mastermind. So you, not only did we see folks that, that's the goal. So we saw folks who are in this in our mastermind at 0%, meaning they have no passive income at all, but they have that goal, they have that focus on, I want to get to the 200%. And then you also have folks that are somewhere along the journey and, and have surpassed the journey and are doing more and want to give back. So uh, I, I would offer you two things as you're listening to this. One, when you can define what it means for you, what does financial freedom mean for you? Either come up with your own definition or take hours, right? Taking hours would be while well, your passive income is greater than your monthly expenses. For that, you can you, you should know one side of it right away. You should at least know somewhat what your monthly expenses are. Because otherwise, you're gonna, it's, you're never gonna actually get to the both sides of the equation. And the second is, everyone starts at zero. <laughs> like everybody starts at zero. I remember Russ and Joey once showed me a chart where they were like, "Hey, we started at zero, and then they started reporting their numbers." And I want to give you guys a really amazing quote. We've all heard the saying, "What gets measured improves," and that's cool, and I appreciate that. But I think what's more powerful is what gets measured and reported improves exponentially. What gets measured and reported improves exponentially. And so if you hear more of, if you're listening to this on my podcast or on Mark's podcast, you should go check out the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast where Russ and Joey actually break down in full transparency all their passive income. And in fact, what I would tell you is go six months prior and listen to that episode because now you'll see the difference between that and the most latest one. But everyone starts at zero. And we had people across the board. So when you hear the word 200% in our context, it means 200% of passive income greater than monthly expenses. Yeah. And for, for me, another million dollar idea was, okay, you've got all this income, you've got all this passive income, but you don't have a system. And so the last module was so impactful for everybody because Russ and Joey broke down very simply this passive income operating system. Well, here's a way to utilize that money and you can do it. You have so much flexibility. You can do it tax efficiently. You get asset protection and you know exactly where to put your money and then where, how, how to use it and, and just use it efficiently. So many people get money or a, you know, a windfall or some passive income and then they're just stuck. And they're just in the weeds with it all and they don't make a good decision. It's like freeze, bite, flight. Well, most of us, when we're confused, are just freeze. And so to break the way they broke it down, it's like, oh, now I know exactly what to do. Here's how to go with my next deal and use it efficiently. All right, my last million dollar idea, and this is one that I think came in the most unique place. It actually came as we were sitting around getting ready to get into 38 degree water this morning. <laughs> where Mark, you exposed us to something where we first, we did this electrical. Um, the biocharger. Yeah, the biocharger. I'm trying, I'm trying to describe exactly what it was, but it, it, it was throwing out electrical waves to help charge our cells. And then we went into a sauna and then we get ready to jump into this 38 degree cold plunge. And the conversation the guy who was instructing us said is that you need to get out of your own way and not hold on to the fear. You're going to have to surrender to it because it's going to be in your mind. And I think right now 
you may be fearful of what it would be like to leave your job like Joey left. Maybe fearful to create passive income when you've never done it before and there's nobody in your sphere. Don't want to lose money or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But one of the things I, I, I love from this event, and it just made me think about it as we were getting in that cold plunge pool this morning, and it was. It was fearful. I, I had a lot of anxiety as I was getting ready to do it. And I did it, and it was rough. Then we got in the hot tub, and then we were asked, do you want to go back for 30 more seconds? And I did it. The second time was way easier. And by the way, I, I, I lasted 45 seconds before I realized, oh, wow, I've gone 15 seconds longer than I said I was going to do. And I had to pay for that experience. Too often times people just decide, well, I, I'm just going to have to work my way through this. I'm just going to have to earn this thing. And one of the people who were speaking said, why is it that people will not pay to expedite the process? And that's what I saw in this room is that I have the opportunity to pay a few of these people to show me how they've built the things that they've built instead of me going and trying to reinvent the wheel and try to take all the time and effort to do it myself. I can make that process go way faster. Joey, you and I experienced that when we got with the link geek over here. We said, hey, we know the land flipping deal works. We are just not the proper operators for it and don't have the, the time to make it happen. How can we partner with your team and pay, right, to get into this process? And now that process, Joey's brought us over $22,000 a month in passive income. Just over two years. And it's one of those things where I think of, I don't know if it's a mastermind for you as you're listening to this. I don't know if it's a coach. It, it may be that you're just saying, hey, I need to get passive income. and I need to find one of these syndicators. I need to find somebody that I can trust and invest in that can create cash flow for me immediately. But whatever that thing is, don't just just try to rough it out. Expedite the process by turning dollars into speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you are at that point where you love what we're talking about, you, you know that you need to make a change. You know that you need to invest in yourself and in your future. And even things like we're sharing about your health, you know that those are needs for you, but you have to put yourself in the position to accept all these things. I'd encourage you to apply, right? Go to the, the passiveincomemastermind.com and apply. And we'd love to talk to you about being a part of this special group that we've put together. And we'll see you at the next retreat. Sharon, final thought. The, um, it's very hard to do things on, <clears throat> on your own. It's very, it, I was talking to a friend recently, and she was so proud that she gave her seven-year-old son a Rubik's Cube and said, solve this. And I asked her, did he solve it? And she said, no. And she's like, he's got to figure it out on his own. And I explained the story of my son who asked for a Rubik's Cube. And then he said, Dad, do you mind if I go on YouTube to figure out how to solve this? Then he went on YouTube and he figured out, he got to, with some videos and he figured it out. And then he got stuck and he couldn't progress further. And he said, Dad, there's this guy on YouTube. He's really good. He does these cubes in under one minute. I think he has an Instagram page. Can I just direct message him? Do you mind? And I was like, I'll do it for you. So I, he did a video and he direct messaged him and the guy responded with an answer. And just by getting a little bit of help, not even paid, he learned that. And, and, he, said, and he said something to me, he goes, dad, I'm so glad I know how to do this now. Here's a lesson there, right? We expect to know things as adults that we were never taught. But as children, we're okay not knowing things we're not taught, which is really strange to me. Nothing has changed. He did not learn it, but he was open to learning it. Just as an adult, we still don't know it, but we feel like we pretend we have to know it, which I think is, cra which I think is crazy. So um, if you feel a certain way that you don't, 
you've never learned anything about passive income. You've never learned how to put money away. Or if you've never learned what investing ideas are. You've never learned. It's totally okay. It's totally okay because you cannot be expected to know what you have never learned or what you've never been taught. And the fastest way is to get around people that have already done it before. Not the Google influencers who read Google and do stuff, but the fastest way is to get around people who have actually done this before. So um, that's the big part of our community, folks that have actually done it and folks that want to teach and help people how to do it. So if you are interested, the, the PassiveIncomeMastermind.com. All right. That, Lange, that's also. really hard to follow because <laughs> it's so true. How often as adults do we think this should be this we should all over ourselves <laughs> and it's so much simpler to go back to that beginner mindset when you were a little kid and you know if you played sports you had a coach you had somebody there who had more experience than you your first coach was, was your parents and you listened to your parents and they smart cutted everything for you in the world and yet we become competent in something we think oh if i'm competent in this i should be competent here and that's just not the way it is. I have a coach for just about everything in my life that's important to me. And I smart cut it. It's the best invest. I've never, ever had a coach where I thought, oh, that was a bad investment. It's always been a 10x, 20x, with you know, one conversation with Sean, a 100x type of idea or, or investment. It's just I'm one person. I have one limited view of the world. Every time I have a conversation with someone who's uh, an expert in their realm, I learn and I grow and I get better and I get smarter. And there's that great Jim Rohn quote, you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most. What's your average? Well, my average this week was just raised and yours should be, not to shit all over you, but you should <laughs> certainly apply to raise the average of the five people you hang out with the most and not just solve your money problems, but solve your time problems. Well, as you've been listening to this podcast, I'm not certain if you've listened to the Wealth Without Wall Street. If that's where you're listening, I, I'm going to encourage you to go over to the Art of Passive Income and uh, subscribe to Mark Podolsky's podcast. This amazing podcast has helped change so many lives in our community. And also, as a business professional, if you want insight from the guy, the person who has influenced so many brands and has had exits and experience in structuring businesses at a level that very few have, I'd encourage you to go over to Sharon's podcast, The Business School, and subscribe to that. You will not be sorry for either one of those. All right. Now, Mark, you have a tradition when you end your podcast. I'm going to make sure we, we, we do it for your audience. You guys ready? All right. As long as Sharon doesn't roll his eyes. One, <laughs> two, three. Let's... Let's Freedom, Freedom ring. ring. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.